everybody woke up. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning, church. So glad to have you here worshiping with us this morning. Uh, as we continue, the Easter season goes through uh, Pentecost, so we are reminded that he is risen. He is risen that is correct. Uh, and his power and love and grace are here among us this morning. So let us rise, embody your spirit, and begin our worship with number 25. Praise the Lord, the Almighty. We are so glad, O oh God, that you have brought us through the storm to this place where we recognize your presence and how you bring us through so many storms, O oh God, with your love and grace. We gather this morning to lift our hearts and voices in praise of you. Um, you are the Almighty indeed. So come and be a very present part of our worship. Gracious God, Brother Jesus, Holy Spirit, rise up in our worship this day power of Christ that we pray. Amen. Let's have the kids come forward. Or do we have any? Oh, we do. <laughs> there they are. Oh, good morning. How are you guys? Four more days, right? Four more days. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Do you guys know what this is? You're close. It has a bee's made it. Actually, the part of it's missing down here. This is really old, so it's it, there's nothing alive in it. <laughs> this was made by paper wasps, and it's it came out of a tree, and and um, 
it's really cool. They, uh, they take dead leaves and dead wood and like dead stems and they chew it up and they take their spit and they put it all on the outside. And you can see like some of the leaves and stuff. And then they make all these little things called cells and they lay their eggs in there. So it's really cool. But I thought I'd bring that one so you could see the inside of it. So they, they all work together to do one thing, right, for one cause. So I have a question. Do you know why we all come to church, all of us? Why do people go to church, do you think? Worship God. That's a good answer. That's a good, uh, yeah. What? Yeah, like God and Jesus. That's right. Good. That's a good answer. Yeah. So we all come to church for one common cause, right? And we believe in God and to be thankful. You guys basically said that. So even though there's a lot of different kinds of churches, everybody doesn't have church like we have, right? Have you guys ever visited another church? Some churches are a lot different from ours. But we all love God and we're all thankful that Jesus came and died for us, which is what you guys said, and that we want to help others like Jesus did, right? So next time you're outside, which is today, like if you go outside, it's a beautiful day. And if you see bees outside, remember, we're kind of like the bees, that we all work together for one cause. But don't get stung, okay? you got to let the bees do their thing too, right? <laughs> yeah, so bees are important, so just kind of let them, let them be. Ha <laughs> ha, get it? Okay, let's say a prayer. <laughs> Dear God, even though we don't always think the same, help us to remember to work together for your common cause to love one another like you love us. In your name, amen. Thank you. You guys can go to worship and wonder. All right, we come to that time where we uh, take a moment here to center ourselves on God's presence in this place among us. Uh, through prayer, and then uh, we will end this, of course, with the Lord's Prayer, which I encourage you to join me for. Will you bow with me? O oh God of love, you know, so often in our world, Lord, we contribute spring as the season of love, where so many people and critters fall in love. But Lord, any of us who have been in love for any amount of time know that once you have fallen, it takes a lot of work to stay there. <laughs> Lord, um, love is something that uh, permeates our lives. But once we have made a decision to love another for life, um, Lord, it takes more than just falling for them. Uh, we need to uh, reach out. We need to hold on. We need to lift up. Love is a decision to honor and care for another, come what may. And Lord, we often think of falling in love as having to do with um, a spouse or a, another human being. But Lord, we fall in love with jobs. Uh, we fall in love with churches. We fall in love with ideas and causes. We fall in love with lots of things. And the same uh, rules still apply. But Lord, when we fall in love with you, when we fall in love with you, all else, every other relationship falls in place so beautifully. Thank you for your love for us and continue to teach us to love as you love. Gracious God, as we come together in this place, each of us comes from our own lives and our own uh, stuff. <laughs> and we bring with us, Lord, concerns about what is happening in our personal lives, what is happening in the world around us and the world at large. And so we pause just now to uh, quietly and individually lift up to you our concerns. Lord, we are so very grateful that not only do you listen to those things that are concerns to us, but you are very present within them. And if we will just pause and look, we can see where you're working for good, even in those times of struggle, even in those times where we are just worn down, oh God. We are so very grateful for that. 
that is just one of the ways that you bless us. You bless us in so many ways. Bringing us through our trials is just one of them. Walking with us as the world hurls its bombs at us is one of them. Sharing your love with us is one of them. And so we pause now to lift our hearts in praise of you and all the blessings you have given us. What a joy you are, O oh God, in our lives. What a joy it is to know you and to be able to share the joy that we have in you with others. Because, Lord, each of us is your individual child, but each of us as a child is part of the body of Christ to, to be unified as one in you. And so now we blend our individual voices together as one voice, saying the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Can you turn in your hymnals to page 720, please? 720. Look in your hymnals. The choir is going to sing four verses of America the Beautiful. Our hymnal has three, but our fourth verse and your third verse match up. So when you hear us start to sing the fourth verse, and it matches up with your words on the third verse, we'd like you to join us. I think most of us already know that, but if you don't, the last verse of 720.
This morning's scripture is from 1 Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 11, and closes with verse 27. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. Because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the end of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I long for all of you with the compassion of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and with full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or I am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel the word of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Peanuts cartoons, and there was one little cartoon uh, some time ago uh, where uh, Linus is watching TV and his sister Lucy comes in and tells him to change the channel. And he says, and what makes, you think, what makes you think you can come in here and take over? And she said, these five fingers. Individually, they're not much, but when you pull them all together like this, they, got, uh, they are a, a, a power terrible to behold. <laughs> Linus looked at her and said, what channel did you want? <laughs> And then as he changes the channel and Ly or Lucy settles in in front of the TV, he looks at his own fingers and he says, so why can't you guys come together like that? <laughs> you know, there is great power when we come and work together. Now, Lucy is, maybe has not the best goal uh, in bringing things together, but she does have a very good point for us to take, right? That we can have this great power for good when we come together through the love of Christ. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, as we come before you this morning, we ask for calm, clarity, and courage. Calm, Lord, that we can uh, set aside distractions, anything that's pulling us away from being present in this moment, and we can just tune into your still small voice. Clarity, that we'll have full understanding of the individualized messages you'll have for each of us. And courage, O oh God, that as we recognize the call you place in our lives, we will step boldly forward into it the power of Christ's name that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> and so since Easter, we have been considering uh, that uh, through the incredible uh, love and compassion of Jesus Christ, we have this resurrection hope for our future. Uh, we have under come to understand that there is no challenge that life can throw at us that Christ cannot help us overcome. And as a, a resurrection people, a people of resurrection hope, we are called to be unified. We really discussed this a lot last week. Uh, to share uh, the love of God in very tangible ways because the world is desperate for hope, desperate for resurrection hope, and desperate uh, to know the God of love. Last week, we also talked about how being unified as the body of Christ is not always easy. 
Uh, unity, though, if we're quite honest, even on a smaller scale, <laughs> if we're not even talking about the whole body of Christ, if we're just talking about a few folks, right, is not easy either. Whenever two uh, seek to become one, you have to understand that those two bring with them their own history, um, their own um, likes and dislikes, all these different things. And when I say two, it could be uh, two people coming together uh, for a relationship or a marriage. It could bring, be bringing two uh, worship services of different styles uh, in, together into one service. It could be a mentor trying to come together with a congregation. And that is what we see uh, today in our letter to the church of Philippi as Paul is reaching out to them as their mentor and hoping that they can be of like mind and come together. These two can be one. And so I would encourage you, uh, you might want to open your Bible and have Philippians 1 uh, there in front of you to kind of reference uh, as we're talking about this. But Paul writes this letter uh, to the, the church in Philippi from a Roman prison. Uh, and he, as he writes, it is so obvious that he is extremely fond of these folks. And in fact, it almost sounds in the beginning especially like a love letter. Uh, though he is in prison, he is filled with joy at the opportunity to pray for them and to write them this letter of encouragement. Paul says there in that opening chapter uh, that he is grateful for them, that he is grateful for the partnership that they have together, uh, how they have supported him not only financially in his ministry, but together he sees them as supporting the gospel he speaks of them as being a, a united entity in and of themselves. And of course, you know, as we talked about last week, we know how hard that can be, right? To be unified, especially in a world that seems to promote uh, division today. But Paul considers this congregation as he begins to write to them, and he offers for us uh, the idea of them having this unified past, present, and future. As we look at the opening uh, there of that first chapter in Philippians, Paul does comment again on that partnership, which he says has been from the first day until now. So we have this, this past and present partnership that is going on. Paul sees for this congregation that God uh, began a good work in them in the past, right? And he sees in this particular congregation uh, a reflection of God's presence in that beginning work uh, where he sees them being unified uh, within God's presence. Now, when Paul speaks of partnership, or uh, depending on your translation, it may say fellowship, when we hear uh, those terms, um, I want to tell you that what we might automatically think of, he's talking about something that's probably a little more intimate. He's talking about a very intimate relationship when he uses the word partnership, uh, when you look back at the original language. It's a, it's a communion, if you will. I think we tend to think of partnership as being uh, very kind of standoffish, like a, a business deal, so to speak. But what he's talking about is a very intimate uh, relationship and we see that this particular congregation, according to Paul here in this opening of his letter, has stood strong by Paul and has stood strong over time from, um, from the first day until now. So Paul's letter tells us, again, of Philippi standing very strong there in verse 7. Um, interesting thing, in, in verse 7, it can be translated two different ways. Uh, depending on your translation, depending on what you're looking at in your Bible, it might say, because I hold you in my heart. But it can also be translated as because you hold me in your heart. And what I love about this dual possibility of translations here is that it really speaks to the depth of their current partnership, right? They are holding each other between Paul and this body of believers, there is a strong bond and a partnership. Goes on then in verse 8 to say, For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. Again, this is sounding almost like a love letter, isn't it? Now, uh, other translations might say, uh, with a longing with the tender affection of Christ Jesus. 
But if we were to look at the original language, this term, this longing that Paul speaks of is something that comes from the bowels, right? This is something that comes from very deep within Paul. Um, it's uh, also something that is supported, this longing would have been supported by a shared suffering when we look at the original language. So perhaps this particular congregation has been through it, right? They've had something perhaps in their past that Paul has helped them through, that they have this thing in common, uh, but they, according to Paul, came through with the grace of God and defending the gospel. So Paul prays for them. He prays that they will uh, have this love that might overflow more and more. And the love that Paul speaks of here is agape love. You might remember that the Greek had like six different words for, for love. And what he uses here is agape. And I'll remind you that this is the selfless love, the all-encompassing love, the unconditional love, the kind of love that God loves us with. And so through this kind of amazing love, uh, he says that they can gain this wisdom, right? And they can uh, gain insight. And that will lead them to an understanding of what really matters for them. It will lead them to act appropriately so that they will be seen as blameless in these particular areas uh, that, that he's talking about um, when Christ comes back which you might remember they think is happening in Paul's lifetime. So the idea here is that they're going to live out in this agape love. Um, and that is how then God will complete the good work within them that God began. They will produce this harvest of righteousness, the scripture tells us. In other words, they will bring others into this relationship through their relationship with Christ, all in a way to glorify God. Christian theologian and author Daniel McGillery um, writes this in his commentary. For Paul, God is the, power, ha, is the power of good beginnings and good endings in all things, not the least in our relationships with one another. The work that God has begun in us will be completed by God. It is the faithfulness of God, not our own or our friend's faithfulness, that is the source of the unwavering confidence that the goal of our life and that of our friends in Christ will be reached. So Paul believes that they will fulfill this future, this brilliant future that he sees for them, that God has planned for them, but they will achieve it through God's faithfulness to them. To do this, they will need to stand firm in one spirit. They need to come together as one. They need to be striving side by side with one mind, the scripture tells us. They will need to be as one. So here's what I know about the church in Philippi. They would have seen some hard times probably in their past, and they absolutely were about to see some very hard times in their future. Now, how do I know this? In addition to scripture? <laughs> because there were people there. <laughs> And they were in the world. They were part of the world at that time. Theologian Theodore D. Uh, Wardlaw tells us, before the letter of Philippians is over, Paul is going to address some tough issues. The letter, though, begins with the assumption of relationship which is strong enough to sustain differences of opinion. When folks come together and try to work as one and set aside those differences, um, what we have then is a lot of give and not so much take, right? We tend to think of uh, relationships like marriage or any other relationship. We talk about how give and take is needed. We have to have all that give and take. But here's kind of what I figured out. Uh, again, remembering that as the two come together to become one, whether we, we talked about all the different ways that that can happen, uh, again, they bring different histories, uh, different personalities, different likes and dislikes, different struggles of their own, different joys into this relationship. And so that blending is not all that easy, which I often have to explain to married couples the day that they get married. They think it's all going to be a piece of cake. <laughs> Some of you may remember being that way years ago. 
and you found that it's not as easy as you might have thought. It actually requires us to work on the relationship. So it's true that when two work to become one, whether it's a marriage or bringing two different uh, worship services together into one or bringing a mentor and a congregation together as one, then it requires work on everyone's part. We say it's give and take, but again, it is more giving than taking. Because if we foc as soon as we start focusing on the take, we start ignoring the give. Real quickly, we can fall into that. Real quickly. Maybe we should say it's all about give and receive. Give and receive. Because if we truly have a heart of love and we desire to give to the other, and as we are giving to them, then we will receive happiness as we watch them experience joy in our giving. If each of us, each of us, if each of us was to focus on the giving, then I'm thinking we wouldn't need so much take. Christian author Josh McDowell wrote, how do you spell love? When you reach the point where the happiness, security, and development of another person is as much of a driving force to you as your own happiness, security, and development, then you have mature love. And true love is spelled G-I-V-E. You know, as I was reading Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, I couldn't help but stop and think, so I wonder how Paul would think we stack up if he were writing to us. And it occurred to me that a community is known by the stories that are told. Of course, each and every community has uh, in its uh, past experiences uh, positives and negatives, right? Every, every community has that. But it's the, it, we see the community's focus and the stories that they choose to tell about themselves. And I began to reflect on how many wonderful stories I have heard from this congregation. How many wonderful stories about how this congregation has this goal of seeking to be one in Christ. How many beautiful stories that show how uh, this congregation seeks to, uh, to be a, a community that shares not only within its four walls, but helps to care for those outside of these walls. How this is a community who has a desire to welcome all into the full life of this congregation. Stories about things like the Haven Youth Center, the community table, this congregation's involvement in the beginnings of the Wellspring Center and Kenmar Apartments, just to name a few. And if you don't know about those stories, ask someone who's been here a while, and they will love to tell you the stories about this congregation's involvement. Stories about our own open communion table, while all are welcome. Stories that I think speak to this congregation as a congregation of resurrection hope. But here's something we need to remember about resurrection. You cannot have resurrection unless there has been loss. Before you can have a new beginning, there has to be a loss. There has to be a death of what was. And I think this is why new beginnings are so hard for us, right? Um, amidst the joy of resurrection, there are always some remnants of loss, of death, and fear of the unknown. But it is our resurrection hope that gets us through those times. As Christians, we have a savior that shows us that even in the midst of loss, we are not alone. Not to say that we need to ignore our loss, absolutely not. We do not need to ignore our grief. We can still have grief and embrace the new. 
And we do that by embracing the love of Jesus Christ. Because it is through Christ that our story is a story of resurrection hope. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, you are our resurrection hope. Our relationship with you is what drives our relationship with others. As we seek to be closer to you, Lord, we know that that will, in turn, help us be closer to those that we care about. Help us to always seek your presence, knowing that you are there no matter what we are going through. If we will look, if we will really look, we'll see you. It's through the power of Christ that we pray. Amen. When uh, Jim and I uh, were first married in our first house, uh, we had a pool table in the basement uh, of that house, and there was lots of room. And when we got our next house, Jim wanted to continue to have a pool table. And I'm like, well, well, sure, you should still be able to have a pool table. But the house that we moved into, the only room where a pool table would fit was what would have been the living room, the front room as you come into the house. And so, that's where the pool table went. Well, <laughs> as he said, yes. <laughs> so, uh, we hadn't been in the house very long when some friends came over. And this particular friend now has his own uh, interior design uh, company, right? And as he walked into the house and he looked in the front room and saw the pool table, he turned to me and he said, you must love that man an awful lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, yeah, of course I do. But here's what I really hope, that when others see my actions in this world, not only the way I decorate my home, but how I operate in this world, that they will say, you must love Jesus an awful lot. That should be reflected in everything that we do, how we love each other, how we provide for each other, make space for each other, how we care for one another even those that we really don't even know very well, because God calls us to love one another, to love our neighbor as ourselves. In fact, Christ said to love one another as I have loved you. And his love was incredible. His love is represented at this table. His love is here in the midst of loss, and death, but also in the midst of new beginning and resurrection. All of that is wrapped up in this meal. And Christ invites us to come and celebrate all of it together. All of it. Since Christ sets the table, all are welcome. Doesn't matter if you're a member of this congregation or any congregation. If you're seeking the love and grace that Christ so freely gives, you are welcome at the table. Let us sing to prepare our hearts for communion. Number 214, Rock of Ages.
as Jesus and his disciples were gathered in a large upper room to celebrate the Passover together, he looked around the room. He saw those that he loved so very much. They were like those five fingers of Lucy. They were going to be all separate and scattered. And his goal was that they would be able to come together in their love for him and carry out his mission in the world. But that night, he knew it was going to be a lot harder than they thought. He knew everything that was before them and before him. He knew that Judas was going to leave them all and go betray Christ. He knew that Peter would follow him and look like he was going to be full support and then would deny that he even knew him. He knew about the trial. He knew about the cross and how few familiar faces he would see from it. He knew about the grave. But he also knew about resurrection. He knew about the new beginning that was available for all. Even in the midst of loss and death, there would be this new beginning this resurrection hope that would bring them all through. And the joy of that knowledge kept him there for that one last supper. So he stood, he took bread, he lifted it to heaven, he blessed it, he broke it, he passed it among them. He said to them, take and eat of this, all of you. This represents my body, given in sacrifice for you. I ask when you do this in the future, you remember me and my love for you. Standing again, he took a cup and he lifted that to heaven and blessed it. He passed that among them. And he said to them, take and drink of this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant. And when you do this, remember me and my love for you. In just a moment, as we hear the music uh, during our time of meditation, I would encourage you on your uh, communion to take the bread, which is in the bottom of your little cup, remembering that each of us is called to have our individual relationship with Christ. But I'm going to ask you to hold the juice, to hold the cup, and we will partake of that together as a reminder that we are one in the body of Christ. For these gifts, let us pray. O glorious Heavenly Father, as we gather on this wonderful day that you have provided, we remember the sacrifice that you so willingly made for us, but we specifically remember the resurrection. And we thank you for that gift and that resurrection of your Son, but we also thank you for the various resurrections within this particular congregation. Times have been hard at times, but we have enjoyed the fruits of the regrowth and the rebirth. And as we come together as one, we thank you for all the many, many blessings that you do bestow on us as a group and as individuals. In Jesus' most holy name, we do pray. Amen.
Let us now partake as one in the body of Christ. And through his blood, we are made new. Having had this blessing and this time of communion, we come now to the time in our service where we lay before the Lord our tithes and our offerings. Just a little of what God has given us and ask us to be good stewards of. Father, we thank you for these gifts that we now return a portion to you. We thank you for all the many blessings that you do bestow upon us, both individually and also as a congregation. We pray that you will help us use these and be good stewards of the gifts that you do provide us, and that we might use them to forward your kingdom here on earth in all that we do and all that we say. For it's in Jesus' most holy name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let you go ahead. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go first. Wait, you're right there. You're on. We didn't talk about that. <laughs> Sorry. It's not, well, you're on. Go ahead. I'm on. <laughs> All right. And I brought my hat, and I brought my hat for a reason. This is a minor league hat for the team in Fort Wayne, not the one in Indianapolis. But June the 7th, we're going to get a group together, and we're going to go to an Indianapolis Indians game. And I'd sing Take Me Out to the Ballpark, but then Sean would know just exactly how off-key I am sometimes. <laughs> and he might throw me out of choir. But the second line of that song talks about peanuts and Cracker Jack. And one of the reasons we picked the seventh is that's dollar night. Yes. Hot dogs, yes. popcorn, peanuts, Cracker Jack are all a dollar. <laughs> We've got 25 tickets. If we need more, we can get more. I'm sure that in the area where we're at, which will be along the first baseline, we should be able to add to that. But come join us. It's always a lot of fun. We're going to try to get somebody to drive the bus. We'll meet here at 515. You guys will meet here. 15. I'm coming from home. <laughs> meet here at, at 515, and then we'll get headed to the ball game and then come back afterwards. So come join us. Uh, check with the office uh, and get your money. The tickets are $11. So it's a, when you look at everything that's out there from an entertainment standpoint, it's a good, cheap, entertainment night but it's great fun and great fellowship for any of you that have done it before and if you haven't done it before come join us and see what the excitement is thank you thank you yes yeah, so do let us let uh the church office know if you want tickets and how many tickets you want and she'll be uh jenny and the church office will be keeping track of that um if you haven't put your connection card in the box yet you can make a note on the back of that or just you know give her a ring or send her an email or however you want to do that um also want to let you know that whoo, that uh, i wanted you to hear that so you'd wake up no um <laughs> that we do have uh, Sunday school again this week, um, our adult Sunday school. Uh, we got a couple options. You can gather upstairs in room 210 uh, for the podcast class, the last one of those uh, for uh, this particular class, or if you want to gather downstairs and just have conversation uh, around the tables there, you're welcome to do that as well. And I'll have the kiddos in uh, our Disciples in Growth class. So, and Linda may have other kids somewhere. Okay, so. <laughs> I don't know where Linda's upstairs, so I don't really know that for sure, but I'd be willing to bet. So, you know what? Um, when I think of two becoming one, there was a couple at our church in Avon, and you probably all know a couple like this as well. I mean, these two people had been married for 
60 some years and they were such a beautiful reflection of each other you couldn't think of one without thinking of the other they were just always together they were a unit those two had definitely become one and they'd even kind of started to look alike do you know people like that it's crazy but it happens and so here's my challenge to you for this week for you to be seeking such a relationship with Christ that you are also a constant reflection of Christ and you even start looking like him. All right, let's do that. All right, let's close. Thank you so much for being here and being part of worship. Guests, be sure and check out our Welcome Center. Um, thank you so much for being here. We're gonna close with 585. What a friend we have in Jesus.